Hello 3D printing friends, it's time once again for another Mod Mondays video on the BV3D channel and today we're going to be installing the Clipper firmware on our ANET A8 3D printer and its associated Raspberry Pi. Stick around and we'll get into it right after this. I'm Brian and you are watching BV3D. Hi everyone, welcome back. Before we get going, I wanted to say thanks to all of you who subscribe to the channel. You are the reason I keep doing these videos. And if you haven't subscribed yet, I'd love it if you would please click the subscribe button down there and also click that little bell to get notified when I release new stuff. Well, this video has been a long time coming, and I've been working up to this one. First, I showed how to install a bootloader on the ANET A8's control board. But since doing that wipes out everything on the board, I also had to show how to reinstall the factory firmware. Then, because the factory firmware doesn't have thermal runaway protection enabled, I showed how to get the Marlin firmware installed on the printer. And now the Clipper firmware gets a chance to play. Mark Corliss of Corliss Media 2.0 was kind enough to cover the cost of the printer used in this video. Mark, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. So, what exactly is Clipper? Well, Clipper is 3D printer firmware which consists of two separate parts. One is installed on a Raspberry Pi. Now, a Raspberry Pi is arguably a more powerful computer than the microcontroller systems installed in most 3D printers. This part of the firmware makes use of the computing resources available on the Raspberry Pi to plan out the schedule of events for a print job. That is, it figures out all the moves and temperature stuff, the when, where, and how hot part, and then feeds that information to a lightweight bit of firmware that's installed on the printer's control board. The code running on the control board doesn't have to spend its time planning out all the moves. Its job is just to carry out the plan that it's given. Now, the idea behind all this is that since the printer's control board isn't having to spend time planning moves, it should be quicker at executing them, and that should translate to a higher maximum print speed. But keep in mind that when it comes to printing fast, the main thing limiting your maximum print speed is how fast your extruder can melt plastic. So even if the printer's hardware is capable of moving at 200 millimeters per second, your extruder may only be able to handle printing at 100 millimeters per second, or even slower. You'll have to decide for yourself what speed works best. Printing with a higher nozzle temperature can help you achieve a higher maximum speed, but in areas of the print where the nozzle isn't moving fast, you may overheat your print material. And you still need to allow adequate time for previous layers to cool before adding new material on top of them, or your final part may have extra filament blobs and other artifacts visible on it. So what are some of Clipper's main features? Well, it features high precision stepper motor movement. It features configuration via a text file, so you can edit your configuration without having to recompile and reflash a new firmware file each time. It works with Octoprint, it still takes standard G-code files, so you don't need a special slicer. It has support for multiple extruders, mesh bed leveling, thermal protection is enabled by default. It has support for many common LCD screens, and it has sample configuration files for many common printers, and the ANET A8 is one of them. And now, it's not all kittens and unicorns, though. There are a few drawbacks as well. Clipper is still a work in progress, and a Raspberry Pi or other host computer is absolutely required. Now, Clipper supports the A8's LCD, but not its clicky buttons, so you don't have local control of the printer. You'll be able to see the printer's status, but movement commands, temperature commands, filament loading, and printing has to be done from Octoprint. And turning the printer off and on again, or otherwise interrupting communication between the two parts of Clipper, will necessitate telling Clipper to restart itself before you can use it again. And so now that we have some idea of what Clipper is, let's get into the actual Clipper installation. We're going to be doing this from a Mac, but since pretty much everything takes place on the Raspberry Pi, it doesn't matter what platform you use, as long as you can open an SSH connection to the Raspberry Pi. Okay, first things first. We need to open a secure shell or SSH connection to the Raspberry Pi. Here on the Mac, we can use the terminal application. From the Finder, click the Go menu, then click Utilities. In the Utilities window, locate and double-click the Terminal application. If you're using Windows, you'll need an SSH client, and PuTTY is a popular one, which you can find at www.putty.org. There's also a link for it in the description. You may recall from a previous video that our Raspberry Pi, which is running Octoprint, has the name octopi.local on our network. This is the default network name for an Octoprint instance that was created using Octopi. If yours is different, use its name wherever I'm using octopi.local. So, to open an SSH connection, type SSH space pi 
which is the name of the user we're connecting as, an at sign, and octopi.local. And then press return. You'll be prompted to enter the password for the Pi user. By default, this is Raspberry, but if you've changed it, and you probably should have, type the correct password and press return. If you correctly entered the password for the Pi user, you now have an active SSH connection to the Raspberry Pi. Now that we're logged into the Raspberry Pi, we need to get Clipper onto it. And we'll do that by cloning the project from its GitHub repository. So to do that, we will type git, that's G-I-T, space, clone, space, H-T-T-P-S, colon, slash, slash, github.com, slash, Kevin O'Connor, slash, Clipper, and press return. This will download the Clipper project to the Raspberry Pi, and it only takes a moment to complete. And there, it's done. Now that the Clipper project has been downloaded, we need to install it. How do we do that? Well, Clipper includes an installation script, so we're going to run it. Type dot slash Clipper slash scripts slash install dash octopi dot sh and press return. Now, some of what the installation script does has to be done with administrator privileges, so you'll be prompted for the password for the Pi user. Type it in and press return. Once you do that, a whole bunch of stuff is going to start scrolling by on the screen as the Clipper installation script does its thing. Just be patient because it can take a while, but eventually it'll get done and things will calm down. Okay, now that the Clipper firmware has been installed on the Raspberry Pi, it's time to get the firmware ready for the printer's control board. Cleverly, the software to do this is included with Clipper itself. As part of the installation, a Clipper directory was created, and we need to change to that directory. So type cd space Clipper and press return. In order to get Clipper to create the firmware for the printer's control board, we need to create a configuration file which describes the control board's hardware, and we'll do that by using menu config. Here's how to do it. Type make space menu config and press return. This will start the configuration utility. We need to enable extra low-level configuration options first, and to do that, we'll just press the spacebar with that line highlighted. Then we're going to set some options. The microcontroller architecture should already be set to the correct value. Make sure it's microcontroller architecture at mega AVR. The processor model needs to be set to at mega 1284p, so to change it, Highlight that line and press return. Then arrow down to at mega 1284p and press the spacebar. The processor speed needs to be changed from 20 megahertz to 16 megahertz. And again, to change it, highlight that line and press return. Then arrow down to 16 megahertz and press the spacebar. The serial port is already set to UART zero, so that's fine. We are not going to compile for Simula AVR software emulation. The baud rate needs to be left at the default 250,000, and we are not going to specify a custom step pulse duration. With all those options now set correctly, it's time to quit and save. Press the escape key twice. You'll be asked if you want to save your new configuration, and of course the answer is yes. So with yes highlighted, press the space bar. The file gets saved, and now we're back at the command prompt. Then to actually make the firmware, we'll type make and press return. More stuff will happen on the screen and then it's done. So now that we've made the part of the firmware that belongs on the printer, we need to actually get it there. But before we do that, we need to make sure that Octoprint is not currently connected to the printer. And when I say that, I don't mean that we're going to unplug the USB cable between the Raspberry Pi and the printer. That needs to stay plugged in. What I mean is that we need to tell Octoprint to disconnect so that it's no longer using that USB connection. That'll make it available to us so that we can upload this firmware to the printer. So let's take a quick trip over to our web browser and connect to octopi.local. If the state section says operational, that means that Octoprint is connected to the printer. 
If that's the case, then look in the connection section and click the disconnect button. That should change the button to connect, which is our indication that Octoprint is no longer connected to the printer. And that's all we needed to do in there for now. So back to our terminal session. Earlier, when we ran Clipper's installation script, that not only installed Clipper, but it started it running as well. We need to stop it prior to flashing the printer's control board. Then after flashing the board, we'll start it up again. The part of Clipper that's installed on the Raspberry Pi runs as a service, sort of like a background task. We'll have to do this as the super user, so we start out with the super user do command, or sudo. Type sudo, s-u-d-o, space, service, space, clipper, space, stop, and press return. Okay, the clipper service has stopped, so now we can flash the printer part of the firmware onto the printer's control board. Now, up to this point, I've been following along with the clipper documentation to perform this installation. I ran into a couple of snags with regard to flashing the firmware onto the printer's control board, so I had to break from those installation instructions. My problems centered around using the make command to actually flash the firmware onto the printer. No matter what I tried, I couldn't seem to specify the correct device port. Then I read through the configuration file that Clipper includes for the ANET A8, and the answer was inside. Use the AVR dude utility instead of make to flash the firmware. The Raspberry Pi operating system, Debian, doesn't include the AVR dude utility by default, and I know for a fact that I haven't installed it yet on this Raspberry Pi. Depending on what you've done with your Raspberry Pi, you may or may not have it installed, but if you don't, I'm going to walk you through how to use the Debian package manager to install it. Like the previous command, this one has to be run as the super user as well, so we'll start with sudo space apt git space install space avr dude and then press return. Stuff will happen on the screen and at the end of it avr dude will be installed. Now we can use the command I found in the A9A8 configuration file. Oh, and before we type this, check to make sure that the USB cable is plugged in between the Raspberry Pi and the printer control board. So here's the command, AVR dude space dash P space at mega 1284P space dash C space Arduino space dash B space 57600 space dash uppercase P space slash dev slash TTY USB zero space dash uppercase U space out slash clipper dot elf dot hex Take a moment to make sure that you see that correctly. I will also include that in the description so you can copy it and paste it. So we're going to press return to get that started. And you'll see the progress in the terminal window as the printer part of the firmware is being transferred over to the control board. And that doesn't take very long at all. In fact, that happened in real time. When it's done, we need to start the clipper service again. So type sudo space service space clipper space start and press return. And that should start the clipper service. Now we need to configure Octoprint to work with clipper. So back to our web browser. If you closed the browser window earlier, open a new one and connect to octopi.local again. Let's get into Octoprint's settings by clicking the wrench icon. And in the printer section, we need to be looking at serial connection and the general tab. In the additional serial ports field, we're going to type slash TMP slash printer, and then we're going to click save. That's going to drop us out of the settings window, so we'll need to go back in. So click the wrench icon again to get back into settings. So again, we're in the printer section, looking at serial connection and general. We're going to change the serial port pop-up 
to slash TMP slash printer, which is what we just typed in. And then in the behavior tab, we're going to change the error handling behavior and we're going to set it to cancel any ongoing prints, but stay connected to the printer. Then click the save button. And that again takes us out of the settings window. So here on the main page, make sure that the serial port is set to slash TMP slash printer. Then click the connect button. This connects Octoprint to the Clipper service that runs on the Raspberry Pi. Now switch to the terminal tab. We need to suppress temperature messages so we can see what we're doing in here. Otherwise, those little messages keep popping up and scrolling our other stuff off of the screen. So we're going to check the box to suppress temperature messages. Then we're going to type status and press return. And this will give us the status of our Clipper installation. Clipper will report an error indicating that it's unable to open its configuration file. So let's go fix that. We're going to switch back to the terminal application. And we need to copy the ANET A8 configuration file into place for Clipper to use. So here's the command. cp space tilde slash Clipper slash config slash printer dash anet dash a8 dash 2017.cfg space tilde slash printer dot cfg and then press return. Now we'll switch back to our web browser. If we look at the status message that we got, it says once the underlying issue is corrected, use the restart command to reload the config and restart the host software. So, since we have corrected the issue with the configuration file not existing, we're going to type restart and press return. That should restart Clipper. Clipper now reports that it's ready, and if we type status again and press return, we can see that it is in fact ready. And this is good. That means that we have successfully installed Clipper on the ANET A8 and its associated Raspberry Pi. Now that we've got it installed, the Clipper documentation recommends going through some configuration checks. I'm not going to cover all of them here, but I will cover the ones that I think are important. First things first, check to see that the temperatures are being reported properly. Let's go look at Octoprint's temperature tab. Watch the nozzle and bed temperatures for a moment to ensure that they aren't increasing. They shouldn't be. We haven't commanded the printer to turn on either of the heating elements. The room I'm in is 23, 24 degrees C, and both the nozzle and the bed are reporting about that temperature. If your nozzle and bed temperatures are not reporting their correct values, or they indicate the nozzle and bed are heating up, turn off the printer. Something's wrong. In our case here, temperatures are holding steady at room temp values. So, verify temperatures, check. Next, we'll verify the M112 command, and that's the emergency stop G-code command, and it tells Clipper to enter a shutdown state. So we'll switch to Octoprint's terminal tab. We'll type M112 in the entry field and send that. And Clipper should immediately enter its shutdown state and stop all communication with Octoprint, as you see here. In the connection area, let's click the connect button again to restore communication with Clipper. Okay, now we're communicating with Clipper again. But Clipper still needs to be reset in order to function. This is part of how the M112 command is supposed to operate. To reset Clipper, type firmware underscore restart in the entry field and send that. As Clipper resets, it will report that it has disconnected and then report ready. So, verify M112 command, check. After this, we'll verify the heaters. So we'll switch back to Octoprint's temperature tab, and we'll set the tool target temperature to 50. And we're going to monitor the temperature to see that the nozzle temperature goes up to 50. And this shouldn't take very long at all. In fact, it's likely that it'll overshoot the value by as much as 15 or 20 degrees, but that's okay, as long as it starts to cool back down and stabilize. Once the nozzle temperature is stabilized, we'll set it to off using the pop-up menu here. And after several minutes, that nozzle temperature should return to room temperature. 
Now we're going to perform the same test with the bed heater. So we'll set the bed target temperature to 50 and wait for the bed to heat up. So now the bed has heated up, its temperature is stabilizing at about 50 degrees C. So I'm happy with that. We'll go ahead and set the bed target temperature to off using its pop-up menu as well. So verify heaters, check. And last, we're going to calibrate the PID settings for the extruder heater. The acronym PID stands for Proportional Integral Derivative. It's a control loop which continuously calculates an error value as the difference between the desired set point, aka the print temperature, and the measured value, or the actual nozzle temperature. It's what turns the heating element on and off at the right time to keep the nozzle temperature at the desired print temperature. Now there are general values already set in the ANET A8 configuration file that we used when setting up Clipper earlier. But for best results, the PID values need to be calibrated specifically for your printer and for the temperature that you print at most often. Since PLA these days seems to like to print around 200 degrees C, that's the value that I'm going to use for the calibration. So how do we calibrate this? Well, let's head back over to Octoprint's terminal tab. In the entry field, type PID underscore calibrate space heater equals extruder space target equals 200 and then hit return to send it. That tells Clipper to run a PID calibration on the extruder with a target temperature of 200 degrees C. This can take several minutes so be patient and let it run. You might want to make sure that you have the suppressed temperature messages checkbox checked so that you can see more easily when the calibration has finished. There. Now, when it finally does get done, type save underscore config in the entry field and hit return to send that. Doing so will update the configuration file with the newly calibrated PID values. Okay, so that gets us up and running with Clipper on an ANET A8 with a Raspberry Pi. The printer is now operational and you can print to it by dragging and dropping your G-code files in Octoprint. But there are a few things to be aware of. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, the LCD will show the status of the printer, but you can't use the buttons to control it. Clipper just doesn't see them, and from what I could determine, supporting them is pretty low on the priority list. So all the little things that you might be used to doing from the control panel on the printer, you'll have to do from Octoprint instead. Also, I've noticed that if you turn the printer off, you have a few extra steps to go through before you can use it again. And this has everything to do with the fact that the firmware is split between the Raspberry Pi and the printer itself. When the two halves of Clipper lose contact, the part on the Raspberry Pi enters a shutdown state, so it's necessary to restart Clipper on the Pi. Now that doesn't mean you have to reboot the Pi, although that would certainly accomplish the task. Instead, while the printer is off, go to Octoprint's terminal tab and send the firmware underscore restart command. Then turn on the printer. In a few seconds, the LCD becomes active, indicating that the two halves of Clipper's brain are communicating. So those are the two main gotchas that I've noticed with Clipper. For now, go experiment with Clipper. Read the documentation, it's linked in the description. See how fast you can get it to go while still maintaining decent print quality. Now I'm going to start a Benchy printing, so let's watch the time lapse because it's always fun to have a time lapse in a 3D printing video, right? Right. Now this isn't going to be a fancy Octolapse time lapse, it's just one of the regular kind. Please accept my humble apologies. The result is a little rough. The bow's a little bit lumpy looking here where the overhang is greater. And I'm not seeing any stringing, so it's okay in that regard. There's some salmon skinning visible on the surface of the print, but that's a function of the stepper motor driver hardware, not the firmware. There's a little bit of pitting in the surface of the print, and it's most noticeable here on the smokestack. Uh, that looks like an extrusion issue, but you know, in all fairness, I've seen worse benches in my time. Far worse. So Slicer Prusa Edition estimated an hour and four minutes to print. 
the actual print time was an hour and 18 minutes. Most benchies I print take between an hour and 30 minutes to an hour and 45 minutes, so for the benchie, it doesn't seem like it's a significant improvement in speed. I notice that Clipper can go fast in the straightaways, but it slows down for the curves, and when it has a bunch of short moves, it slows those down as well. I remember reading that Clipper tries to maintain a constant acceleration until it gets up to its maximum speed. The less distance that it travels in a straight line, the slower it'll go. Well, there we go. We've got Clipper running on the A8 with its Raspberry Pi, and what do you know, it still prints. It's clear that I need to do a little more tuning of Clipper based on this Benji. Future videos will cover some of the tuning that you can do in Clipper, and I may do some speed and quality comparisons between Clipper and Marlin, because I'm curious to see how the two perform relative to one another, especially at higher speeds. I also want to find out if the kind of model being printed makes a big difference in speed. Now, if you find that Clipper isn't for you, that's perfectly okay. If you don't care for it, you can load the ANET factory firmware back on the printer, or you can load Marlin on it. I've got a video covering both of those subjects linked in the description. Okay, I think it's about time to wrap this episode up. I do hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. But either way, let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you like the content I'm producing, consider supporting the channel with a one-time micropayment. You could buy me a coffee or leave a little something in the PayPal tip jar. Links for both of those are down in the description. Well, all right, now that I've got some new firmware installed on the printer, I'm going to go print something cool. You do the same, and I'll see you next time.